Good morning, everybody. Welcome to this uh, BDB webinar series. Today, we have the pleasure of having three speakers who are going to present an overview of the work done within the DataBio project, which is a lighthouse project uh, funded under the topic ICT-15 uh, that most of you surely know and is working on big data for several sectors in bioeconomy. But before that, uh, allow me to say a few words about uh, this particular webinar series. This webinar is part of a series where we will be inviting speakers from different organizations and innovation projects uh, to talk about their experience working with uh, the fields of uh, big data and AI. And by the way, I take this opportunity to invite any of you uh, to contact me anytime in case you believe that you have a topic of interest for the audience and would like to be a speaker of uh, one of our webinars. The goal of uh, this uh, webinar series is to show the value of the big data, both from the technical and business perspectives, as well as touching some topic of interest for our communities, uh, such as lesson learned, best practices, innovative solutions, societal debates, etc. We run at least one webinar per month, uh, typically on web and Tuesdays at uh, the same time, at 12 set, the Central European time, like this one. But stay tuned as the schedule of the webinar depends very much on the on the context, uh, such as the availability of speakers, avoiding coinciding with other related events, and so on. So but sometimes the, the time is not exactly on Tuesdays, but we try to keep the schedule. Uh, our next webinar, as you can see here, is around uh, in January and as around the uh, main policy changes and recommendations for, for big data. So you will have the possibility of uh, registering to this webinar in the near future. So if you are interested in one of our webinars and also in the previous webinars, as this one, when it will be recorded, it will be listed in this URL that you have uh, at the bottom of the page. So you can see the historical archive and the, the new webinars in this particular URL. Before uh, jumping into the webinar, let me give you some uh, housekeeping rules very, very quickly. Uh, please, if you have any questions for the speakers, uh, write them in, in the chat. At the end of the presentation, I will hand it over to the speakers to answer your questions. Uh, I'm going to ask now a couple of questions. Uh, in a kind of poll, uh, just to know a little bit um, uh, the audience that we have here today, and also for, to give uh, some feedback to, to our speakers. So I will start a poll now, a very short one. I I'm going to launch it, and you will be able now to, to answer. And uh, the first question is about uh, your profile. So please let us know if uh, you are more interested in technical aspects, or you are more on the business side of the application of big data and AI. So I give you um, a few more seconds to answer and then I will close the poll and inform the speakers about your profile. So I see that people are still answering. Okay, I'm closing now in a few seconds. Okay, closing. So I would say that 75% are more technical oriented while 35% are more into the business side. So this is a good feedback for our speakers. And then the second question that I'm launching now, second and last question, is about the subject of this particular webinar. So is your organization a user of big data in the bioeconomy or are you providing big data solutions for environmental companies or, or, or any type of uh, sector? Or are you simply interested on the topic? So please uh, answer the question. I will give you again a few seconds. Okay, you see that people are answering, still answering. Let's give you three more seconds. Okay, I'm closing now. And uh, according to the poll, 80% uh, are users of the technology, 45% are providing solutions, and 36% uh, are interested in the solutions. So I think this is, again, good feedback for our, for our speaker. Thank you for, for answering. And now, without further delay, let me introduce uh, the, the webinar and uh, the speakers to have on today's. So we have the pleasure of having today three speakers from the Project Data Bio, 
as I mentioned at the beginning. First of all, we have the, the coordinator of the project, uh, Athanasios Polikadas. Poliki, oh, I don't know if I pronounce your, your name well. You can correct me later if I want Tanasis. So Tanasis is uh, from Intrasoft and will give you a, an overview of the results of the DataView project. Then we will have uh, we will have Kai Sodeger, which is uh, uh, the technical coordinator of DataView. He's a research professor at BTT, uh, Data Driven System and Services. And last but not least, we have uh, Dr. Ephraim Javi, Javi, again, Javi Jari Rirmana, complicated for me. He is also working on the project and uh, he's the ch uh, chief scientist on CREA Research Center for Cereal and Industrial Crops. So without further delay, I'm going to hand it over to, to the first speaker who will be, um, will be our colleague Tanasis. So let me change presenter, one second. Okay, Tanasis, now the floor is yours. You can unmute yourself and start talking about thank you uh, so much. the overview. Thank you so much, and thanks to BTV for offering this forum for us to present our project results. So in my presentation, I will just provide an overview of this project and some main tangible results that uh, coming out of that. Not all of them, because it's, as Thomas said, this is a lighthouse project, so we have a lot of things that uh, were done. So uh, as also Thomas mentioned, this is one a lighthouse, big data lighthouse process. There are four of them. Data Bio was um, the first one that started yeah, early 2017, and now it's wrapping up uh, this month. Our positioning is to, to try to bring big data added value in the bioeconomy, and in particular, we're looking at uh, agriculture, forestry, fishery, these three sectors. sectors. It's we had a lot of partners, 48 partners from 17 part countries. We have uh, engaged more than 100 uh, organizations in our trials and in our events. And uh, we had a big number of technologies, big data technologies that we used in, the, in this project, more than 90. And we used them eventually uh, within through 27 pilots in agriculture, forestry, and fishery. So the, the main uh, thing that we did was we are trying to, sorry, just to, can I, um, we are taking all these different pilot requirements from agriculture, 13 pilots in agriculture, forestry, eight pilots and six pilots in fishery, and taking them through a big different uh, data types and the data itself, and trying to find common solutions to common technical pipelines uh, to try to address uh, for data management, data processing, uh, visualization, and uh, analytics, and to, to provide and go for um, uh, for the common cause, which is uh, the, sorry for the interruption. I just couldn't see my screen. Uh, to to see them for to improve the material production, uh, mat biomaterials to have production which is responsible and sustainable, and the agriculture, forest, and fishery provided the base the baselines and the requirements, and they also provided the test beds where we validated how much we achieved this or not. So we ran these projects in in two series in two phases. So we produced the first phase of technology platform, which was used in a trial set in 2018. And there was a second version of the technology solutions, which uh, was used in uh, the pilot trials this year, the second pilot. And now we are summarizing our results. So our main achievements that we actually ran 27 diverse pilots, I will mention them in the next slides. And we used in them more than 95, 95 technology components, 60 actually used in the trials, and 38 data sets, 16 pipelines of technology components, major pipelines. Where data Bio was the lead project in defining the BDVA reference model. And we have cataloged all these things, all these technology components, data sets, pipelines in the Data Bio Hub. Kai will talk about this part in his presentation. 
we, as a Lighthouse project, we had the obligation to try to, to reach the end users and the ecosystem, the bioeconomy and big data ecosystems in particular. So we had uh, more than 108 events, and we had a big activity, in a big number of followers and members in LinkedIn, Twitter, and other and social media. We also produced a book on the Data Bio project. This is under the preparation. It should be published within 2020. And in terms of uh, business and uh, exploitation activities, we have identified about 31 exploitable results, and we have devised uh, business plans for each sector, so for each of the agriculture, forestry, uh, and, uh, and fishery sectors, but also within each pilot uh, business, devised uh, customized business approaches. Just a few overview of, of our pilots. Uh, so we had uh, uh, pilots in, uh, in agriculture, in, uh, so a set of pilots in, uh, in Netherlands, Italy and Greece, on olives, fruits, grapes and vegetables. Uh, genomics in greenhouses in Italy, cereal biomass and fibers in uh, Spain, Italy, Greece and the uh, Czech Republic. And uh, two pilots in Italy and the Czech Republic using uh, agricultural machineries. Then insurance supports in Greece and, in, and Italy. And common agricultural policy support uh, pilots in uh, Italy, Greece, and uh, Romania. So a total of 13 agricultural pilots. And if you want to see what was under there, because I see that a lot of our audience is technical. And um, we try to use holistic approaches to combine different kinds of data. So combining earth observation, meteorological, uh, in situ IoT data, and also genomic data to make uh, the descriptions, predictive, predictive analytics for irrigation, fertilization, and pest management, to have uh, yield models, to have uh, real time uh, monitoring and alerts to create uh, genomics prediction models, uh, to have uh, descriptive predictive analytics on uh, how on the operations of the tractors, and using also remote data from uh, satellites to, to diagnose uh, the damage assessment uh, on, on plots, and also to identify the crops uh, used uh, using just satellite data. These last two are used in insurance and uh, common agricultural policies. And in forestry, we had uh, two pilots in, in Finland on using uh, many sources of uh, information uh, to also uh, crowdsourcing, including crowdsourcing and offering services in forestry. We had uh, a set of pilots in, uh, in Spain and also in Finland for forest health for um, uh, remote sensing for, and to identify invasive species and uh, assess the damage done by them. And then two pilots in Finland and uh, Czech Republic to, for forest data management. So a total of eight forestry pilots. And the, the other right technology included a data sharing platform, included a lot of uh, data sources, uh, analytics for to predict and assess the forest damage, uh, feedback analytics on the work quality but done by workers, uh, predicting uh, using the combination of remote and local data for detecting pests, and also for making risk assessment for invasive alien species. Finally, we had a set of pilots for fishery. And there so are two main categories of fisheries, uh, fishery pilots, uh, oceanic and uh, pelagic fisheries. So oceanic was mostly tuna, and the pelagic fisheries were uh, mostly cod and other kind of fishes. So the, in terms of the, there were two sets of, one pilot in Spain and one pilot le, le centered in, the, in the Norway, were working on the, how to optimize the operations of uh, the fishing. Similarly, another two pilots on how to better plan the fishing missions, both in the oceans and the pelagic. And then 
two pilots in pelagic, only for pelagic fisheries in Norway. Uh, one is how to have a, a sustainable so a stock assessment. And the uh, second, how to correlate with the market predictions and traceability to make to ensure that you fish at the right time and when the market value is highest. So a total of six fishery pilots. And just a note that we're not talking about Oceanic, we're not talking just outside Spain. Uh, it's centered in Spain, but uh, the fishing was done in the, also as you can see, on the right hand side in the Indian Ocean. And uh, on the technologies under the hood, there was a lot of uh, analytics for uh, to improve and uh, predict the performance of the engine for engine performance and the energy consumption also for near real time decision support about operations uh, about prediction of the best where the fishing grounds uh, uh, are now and also for real time complex reverse processor to optimize the fuel consumption for over cuts the same quantity of fish in addition, uh, hybrid analytics for assessing the fish stocks and uh, to predict the price trends for the fish caught. So going very quickly over a few results uh, coming out of these puzzles indicatively. So I will go very fast of them because there is not much time. So they, in terms of the olives for fruits and uh, grapes, uh, uh, pilot that was run in Greece in two sites in Greece. Uh, as you can see on the right hand side, there was an improvement of the average cost of spraying, the average cost of irrigation, and the natural, natural goods and usage, fertilization. So, for example, there was a 30% uh, overall, 30% production cost uh, reduction in one olive uh, farm. And based actually on that, there was a um, a bid to create to give a, from the ministry, national ministries, to for to deploy smart farming services to all Greek farmers. So it was close to 30 million bid. So in in Italy, to find the best uh, when is the, the time to to harvest the crops without going to the to the field all the time to reduce the number of visits. So we got some results, very good results for sugar beet seeds, sunflower, soybean. They are, were able to very well predict when it's the right time to go and harvest. And not so good for onions and cabbages. These models uh, didn't work very well for them, but that's the nature of uh, research. Uh, we get some good results and that's some bad results, but overall, we got some, something that we can improve. So uh, as you can see here, on the bottom right hand side, uh, for cotton crops, you reduce a lot of uh, the amount of water that was used. And as you know, uh, cotton is a crop that um, uses a lot of water. In insurance, uh, in Greece, actually, the models that we created for anomaly of detection and reporting, and it was done, uh, we managed to get the report done within two weeks. And this was actually done with two uh, damages that were done in a heat wave in 2015 and floods in 2018. So we staged it with real damages, real crisis. And then we had also the CAP support uh, in uh, running Romania, where they were able using just satellite images to to predict what the, to find the crop that was, uh, uh, harvest, that was harvested, that was uh, sown in its field, uh, with an amazing number of accuracy, about 97% accuracy for 32 crops, different crops. And same for Greece, similar results for Greece. They use different kind of uh, learning and different kind of crops with about 90% accuracy. Now in forestry, there was this uh, forest management platform that was award-winning also by BDVA. And uh, it uh, actually managed to combine a lot of information, provide information on the field to the, to the workers. And uh, the reports from the workers that they saved about 75% of work time. 
and uh, he was deployed in Finland and uh, also in Spain, Belgium and Czech Republic. And uh, the last three sites was not because of the project, because of the uh, business value. Only. And uh, the thing, there was also an open data service in Finland that was, uh, went live. And uh, since uh, last year, March 2018, over 16 terabytes uh, of data had been already downloaded. So it is heavily used. On, uh, there was a, a data management platform uh, deployed, uh, developed in, uh, in Czech Republic. It was mostly focused about the forest health trends, especially of uh, the bark beetle calamities and where they occur. And this platform, to cut the story short, was actually used by the Minister of Agriculture, there, the local minister, to direct, to, to assess the damage done by the dark beetle and to direct subsidiaries to the farms that were damaged. So it was actually used in practice and to create national policies for the future. In the oceanic tuna fisheries, we had uh, improvements in three cells. We created analytics and visualizations to combine all the data coming from the vessel uh, instrumentations for energy performance and for comparisons. And uh, then we extended that to for four detections and uh, compared with uh, energy models. And uh, we extended this further for real time uh, event detection uh, using the complex event, the proton complex uh, event processing. For the planning of the tuna uh, oceanic fishery in, uh, in uh, the Indian Ocean, for example, as you can see on the bottom left side, uh, we there, is, there was a better estimation of where the tuna, the fish is, where the fishing route is, and a, a better planning uh, of how to go there. So overall, there was a 90% average destruction of the fuel consumed for every kilogram of fish catch. And for the small fishery pelagic, a, a forecast tool was used using an above uh, uh, over the SINBO, the popular SINBO, uh, oceanic model, uh, uh, 3D oceanic model. And uh, they were using also correlated with data for fish cuts and sea surfaces from uh, get caught from satellites and they, to improve the forecasts. And when you want to correlate with the market predictions and traceability, a fishery portal was created where, where you, you users could use and combine the historical data, historic catch data, uh, combine them with uh, the environmental uh, conditions and correlate them with forecasts for the marine environment and uh, make the, based on this, make the decide on where to best uh, go to fish, when is a good time and where to, fish, uh, to catch fish. Uh, this was just an overview of uh, the results of the Tabio. Kai and uh, Efrem will uh, go further inside some of the details. Uh, I encourage you all to visit the Tabio, uh, the website, uh, and also our social media for further information and all the deliverables. And when the book comes out, uh, to read the book and get the book. But also, we, we encourage you to uh, talk to our team who can. Uh, directly uh, guide you about how to improve your business using our results. Thank you very much. And with that, I will hand over to Kai. Okay, hello everybody, and you, I suppose you can see my screen. Is it? Yes, we can. Working. Very good. Thank you. So, so um, uh, I will now uh, approach the topic from the, a bit more from the technical side and uh, talk about what kind of uh, so-called platform we have used in the Data Bio project. I'm. Um, 
some words about myself. I'm working as a, a research professor here at the Technical Research Center in Finland, BTT. I've been here for some time and uh, before that some years in the industry and uh, during my career I have I can say that I've worked mostly with with big data it was images in the beginning and uh, and in, in uh, different applications uh, very much in media technology but also in environmental and in health and uh, and now in this data in this bio <clears throat> economy that is a uh, um, very extremely important topic, as we all know, with the climate crisis and the growing population in, in the world to feed. So it cannot be more important. So let me uh, <clears throat> uh, start with, uh, uh, with some words about what we mean with the platform here. So it's uh, it's not uh, it's not a monolithic technical system uh, like something like the Microsoft Office or or Amazon Cloud. It is uh, because those platforms cannot really be constructed in a research project, and and uh, it's difficult to get people to to use them when the project is over and uh, and to maintain them instead we have developed a, a, a environment where the software is developed and uh, and deployed in, in different uh, for example as docker modules in different uh, environments hardware and operating systems and clouds so that's uh, how we see uh, our domain here and uh, and of course this uh, platform handles big data with high volume high velocity and uh, and uh, variety a vast variety and uh, and this platform provides you know a, a tool set for for uh, developing services in in these three fields agriculture forestry and fishery and and it's 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 of course mostly composed of of uh, components that have been and software that have was already brought to the project as background. It was always already developed by the technology partners in this project. That by the way are about half of the about twenty of the total number of of. of uh, members in the pro partners in the project and uh, and uh, but they have been refined in this project and also combined with uh, with uh, other components open source so everybody everything doesn't come from within the pro from the partners of course and uh, as Thanos has said already we are uh, focusing on on the on the what we call pipelines that are, are should also be reusable uh, so that you are to, to avoid the the, the pro vendor lock-in so that's why we have uh, have modeled the components the the interface of the components very accurately here put a lot of effort in, in modeling them so then that makes it possible then to to change the, a certain component later on <clears throat> from another provider and uh, so just to stress our approach here so uh, that is uh, that is uh, the view that uh, these solutions are developed iteratively uh, in a way in a sandbox and and what we are uh, so it's uh, and it's a normal circle so it's uh, it's not a waterfall so it, instead it's it's you are designing the solution and uh, and you are based on the design you are building it and then you are testing it in this project as Tanasi said we had two rounds of tests and then you learn 
like we did for the from the first uh, test here, the first trial, and then we modified design and again a new iteration. And uh, then here we have this iterative development then uses uh, the soft components and other software tools that we have collected in what we call a data bio hub here. So, and you can see the that can be accessed over net. It's it's public resource. And, uh, and also, of course, we have the website, and uh, and then uh, third resource is the cloud, the the image software images, typical in Docker form. And uh, and uh, so you have uh, in the hub you have uh, we have the components, software components, pipelines, uh, data sets, and also description of the pilots and on the website uh, all our reports that's called deliverables these projects also UML Archimate models of the of the components and and of course presentations like this one and um, and uh, and then uh, and then uh, the the deploy Talking about the deployment, so our approach here is to 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 keep the software close to the data instead of, of, of transferring data uh, here and there. The big data volumes we are uh, putting our software predominantly. We are bringing the software to the cloud where the, the data data resides for example in the for we are using the forestry tap that is uh, has been developed by by the uh, european space agency and uh, and we have uh, and we are uh, 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 keeping the the satellite data and we have uh, in the forestry applications we have uh, for example the modules developed by vtt are there on the cloud on nesas cloud and, uh, and there are several similar ones for the for the uh, agriculture probably so that's uh, in a way our our architecture for the development environment that we have used and then uh, so we had the altogether 27 pilots and uh, and this development environment is now uh, supporting all these pilots, as Tanas is said, uh, to, to make it the decision, to support the decision making by by the different stakeholders like farmers, for forestry, forestry, forest owners and and fishermen, and all co of course the those stakeholders that are providing advice to these end users and uh, and uh, and also including the authorities that for example is monitoring the, the what's what's uh, growing on the field and um, so this where where uh, there were the three work packages <coughs> one two one three and then we had uh, we have two kind of uh, of data here involved the one is uh, is uh, the data that we are collecting from the fields with uh, with stations, uh, both from below the surface, from uh, from the soil, uh, typically the mo the temperature of the soil and the moisture of the soil, and also from the air, the, the temperature and moisture of the air, and and also a lot of other. Uh, uh, Parameters are, are measured. Measurements are done on, on these stations, and uh, and so th this is now the the in, we can call it Internet of Things data. And we had one work package uh, explicitly on this, and then in addition we had the satellite data that were uh, typically 
provided by the Sentinel-2 service, satellites, and, uh, and also we use some experiments here, the drones, and, uh, and uh, for the forest, we also use information from aeroplane, gathered from uh, laser, sc laser scanning from aeroplane, aeroplanes. So these, the, the, these different kinds of, uh, of uh, surveillance are now under this Earth observation term here. So uh, this was uh, how, the, how the data was obtained and then it went through this uh, pipeline to serve the different pilots here. And um, let us then uh, say some words about the pipeline. It's, it might be a bit uh, a difficult uh, concept here. Uh, and uh, I contrast it here with a, with a service, the, the notation of a service that is more commonly used. So, but a pipeline, as we have used here, is, is um, something it's a, a, in a way a chain of processing components where the output data of one element is is fed of the input data of the next. So that is, and uh, and uh, and, uh, and there are clear interfaces and clearly described interfaces between components and and uh, and also between a component at the outside. So it's it's uh, like you see here. It's in a way a wiring diagram like you have in, in the electronics uh, and that is that is for the developer to understand and uh, and to the, so he, ha he has in a way a, a puzzle here a lego puzzle in, in front of him and then he can add something take something away as we, as as long as the as the pieces are well described and their their internal Link, linkages and uh, so it's a it's a white box for the developer whereas the service here is is uh, provides a usability to the, to the end user it's something that we have here uh, here in the uh, in the in the bottom at the bottom here and uh, and uh, for the end, the end user is not interesting in the internal wirings of the system and uh, so, and it works through uh, through uh, APIs very much. That are are and and they are talking and, uh, and database queries. There you activate. Uh, so it's a service request, and and the service is then executed in the cloud. So this is now more of a black box, whereas the, the pipeline is a, a white box. So this uh, a bit to understand the. What the, uh, what the concepts we are using here, and um, and uh, we are using a, 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 and we have also, as Tanis said again, uh, being developed this framework for for how to get to grip with the different layers in a in in a big data process, and uh, so this I. I Suppose is is a, in a way the normal stack structure where you're starting with the physical word here, and, uh, and uh, that are sen censored, and and you are bringing it up the data over the data management protection and uh, and processing, analyzing, and up to the visualization or user interaction. And, and you have, of course, different kind of of, of data depend, depending on your on your applications here. That can be a wide range, and uh, and uh, you have additional aspects here on the right. So this is the the, the framework, and uh, and we have uh, we have 62 components that we have applied here in the trials. In, in fact, we had almost 100 to start from, but all of the, what was, was declared as background when we started the project, all did not really find their, 
usage in the pilots. And uh, but we were able to to use about two thirds of the of the of the project of the components that we started with, and uh, and we have uh, had a fairly extensive matchmaking process here between the where the technology the providers uh, presented what they have to the pilots and we were uh, through that able to create new combinations uh, of technology pieces and uh, and uh, in a way a, comp a cooperation between companies and uh, and uh, research institutes that did not exist before the project around within the pilot and uh, so we have uh, on average two comp of these components are uh, deployed in the in the pilots and uh, we have uh, also developed new inter new interfaces and uh, apis of course a big and uh, and uh, amount and uh, being able to rise the technology to major the component components and uh, bringing them closer to the market and as you see here from the left we, the the components are uh, covering this, uh, this technology stack here fairly very equally and um, uh, so, sorry to interrupt Kai, but, but we are running out of time so you need to, to speed up a little bit to I give time to my friend yeah i will thank I, you I, I just have a couple of minutes to go and uh, and so this is now the the data bio hub where we have the components and uh, and the pipelines yeah, that is accessible and you can do the searches and um, and you can access the data bio hub not only as a user you can also access it access it through meta searches from machine to machine and these um, so, and we have a, a a lot of linkages to to like at like at pointed out in the beginning to to the external documentation also to the report and so on so you can so this is really the <clears throat> the core in the in, in the platform and um, the, this was uh, the one of the pilots that Tanas is already described from the agri agriculture part, and uh, and as as was said here, it's about <coughs> predictions real and giving real time alerts of diseases and pest breaks out through through this uh, event processing and. Um, and uh, here again, you can see the pipeline that is behind it. So we have the we have the gathering of the of the of the of the information from the from the typically from the weather stations, <coughs> environmental sensors here, and then you are pre-processing it in this uh, module, and then. Uh, analyzing the events here in the IBM's uh, module and then have, having the, the user interface for the farmer to serve the farmer here so that's what is behind this and uh, and these were the results very that Thomas is already told about so to conclude the platform here is it's an environment for developing and deploying software in this sec in this sector and, uh, and it uses the components mainly from the partners that are arranged into pipelines and um, we and it, we hope that this will help actors that that now are, are also outside the data bio to develop services more far in a faster way uh, so this can be a, a stepping stone for for new projects be them research project or or company com, co company internal projects thank you very much for this and uh, i suppose uh too much that maybe in the end we will have some you will gather from the chat some questions maybe we have time for them but uh, now i will 
uh, then shift this to to uh, change presenter to a frame here yes a frame you should have the presentation right now yeah yeah uh, thank you Kai. and um, i hope you can see my screen let me shift to full presentation mode so um, uh, I really thank you, thank the BDVA for the invitation and uh, the possibility to show uh, uh, the main achievements uh, in this project data bio that is uh, getting into termination phase at uh, end of this year. So I will try to be very speedy because I have uh, less than uh, probably 15 minutes. So. I will talk about the breakthroughs in, uh, we achieved in this project, focusing on results because um, the uh, um, uh, organizational aspect, uh, technical aspect also have been presented by my predecessors. I will start by saying that uh, I was one of the uh, uh, data bio uh, uh, members, uh, partners that uh, uh, was uh, among the finalists uh, uh, in last September for the European Data Science and Artificial Intelligence Award uh, uh, that held, was held in Dublin. There was also another uh, partner uh, from Finland uh, working on uh, Woody. Uh, so this is a very important also achievement that need to be presented here. So. As I said, I will try to put my presentation into a context. Uh, we have now a situation uh, at the world level because um, uh, by April, last April, the world population was 7.7 uh, .7 billion and we are expected to be around 9 billion in 2015. And the current rate is, uh, 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 it is actually estimated that one person uh, among six is hungry and for this we need to increase productivity by 70 to 100 percent so experts including us we believe there is no single solution to getting this done but uh, we think that uh, a big data technology can help uh, the world reach a very uh, 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 interesting productivity level at agricultural, at agricultural level to help feed this hungry population. So the Tabayo then in the, our, uh, our objective is we target uh, to really increase productivity in agricultural uh, domain by uh, 20%. Uh, so we think this is possible. And uh, our strategy is starting by engaging uh, European ICT and earth observation industries in innovative big data uh, technologies we are implementing in this, this project uh, to boost the main European agriculture, agriculture bio, uh, uh, the, I mean European bioeconomy uh, domains including agriculture, fisheries and uh, forestry. This has been shown but I will uh, paraphrase it here at the left you have a big data and big data technologies. And then uh, here in the middle, we have uh, analytics that are being uh, deployed. And uh, the outcome here are the products of all big data, big data technology implementations. But uh, at the level of, bio, of uh, uh, the data bio project, this outcome is mainly in terms of services as you have been uh, following my predecessors. So for this presentation, uh, I have uh, chosen to talk about agricultural area. And uh, every, as you have seen here, we have a 27 pilot. So I have uh, tried to sample a few of them and present you the most out, uh, outstanding results. Uh, this uh, slide was uh, shown, but uh, here this is a sample of a service in terms of irrigation, fertilization, 
and uh, 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 and the crop protection. And uh, what I will emphasize here is mainly the achievement, the key performance indexes here. You can see that uh, up to 72% uh, cost reduction was achieved. This is in terms of uh, fertilization, and we have uh, around 43% reduction of cost in terms of irrigation and uh, 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 more than a 20% reduction of cost in terms of crop production. This is really remarkable. And uh, due to this achievement in Greece, for example, a 20 million uh, co euro call was launched to cover entire Greece with agroclimate sensor to duplicate the achievement we got from data by your project. I will show you another pilot, uh, biomass, uh, cereal and biomass crops, but uh, here it is in the cotton. And uh, the advice here was in terms of irrigation. And you will see achievement here, around 30% of irrigation costs were achieved. Uh, now I, I, I will go rapidly to another uh, pilot, uh, which is uh, big data management in the greenhouse ecosystems. So this is, was about uh, the implementation of genomic prediction and selection uh, in data science in order to boost the breeding of, uh, of vegetables, including particularly the tomatoes that are grown in the big, in the glass houses. I will try to start rapidly by recording. I, I think most of you probably are not working in the breeding. So I will start by emphasizing the importance of genomic predictions, because as you know, or I will tell you for nearly 30 years, in breeding, it was impossible to apply marker-assisted selection in breeding due to technical problems. But uh, now the genomic prediction and selection will allow us to implement mass in breeding across crops. Uh, in terms of uh, breeding, uh, the progress here is measured in terms of response to selection. I will try to rapidly illustrate. For example, when you plant a population of, uh, of plants, you select the best ones and uh, you grow an offspring of the best ones. You do the same. You replicate year season after season and ultimately you increase productivity here. Starting by one, you can double. And uh, during this process, we select for breeding values. And uh, for a long time, selecting for breeding time, for breeding values was really difficult and uh, really ineffective. And uh, by genomic selection, which is a gold standard approach for estimating breed breeding values, this is going to be very easy to do. The response to selection actually it has allowed us to see there are only four ways to increase the response. You can either increase variation, precision, select harder, or then reduce time. And uh, these were the conventional approaches to do this. And uh, these conventional approaches here were taking long time and were really costly. And uh, genomic prediction and selection allows us to cut time and cost very drastically because we shorten the generation intervals because intercrosses are driven by genomic predictions. Uh, in this pilot, we have uh, facilities. This, uh, this, is a, this is a facility in the Thessaloniki in Greece for phenotyping and uh, producing the phenomics data in the glasshouses tomatoes. Here is in Italy, where we are doing the same, but in uh, uh, sorghum uh, populations. And uh, we are also uh, getting genome, whole genome uh, uh, data using dd ratsec or GBS-CNIPS or whole genome resequencing. Sorry, doesn't move. And uh, in this, we have uh, several scenarios. We can uh, uh, predict 
uh, we can model single threat, you can model multiple threat in index selection. We can model one environment, we can model multi environment using several cross validation scenarios here. The CV1, for example, is when we are predicting lines that uh, have not been evaluated in any environment, but in a few environments. In uh, cross validation two, we are predicting lines that have been uh, evaluated in some, but not in all environments. While in the third scenario here, it is the most mostly known as Monte Carlo cross validation, where you really test only as a few while training with the most. And all of this allows us, when you test a few environment, when you test a few materials, you are saving time and you are saving cost with uh, the consequence increased, increased uh, income and productivity. Uh, what we've been obtaining here, for example, a very good level of accuracy in terms of uh, antioxidant products. Uh, I will tell you that antioxidant compounds are used currently in the manufacture of specialty foods to fight against degenerative diseases like obesity, cancer, etc. This is, for example, for phenylic compounds. This is a flavonoid compound, uh, total antioxidant capacity and the condensed tannins. All of these, this accuracy is satisfactory technically. This was uh, obtained in a in in cultivated uh, potato, for example. Uh, we have a very good accuracy in uh, pigment, in uh, the size of the tuber, in uh, dry mass weight, which is a good predictor of uh, uh, starch, uh, which is a very a good indicator of the quality of fries. And uh, here we have, for example, our KPIs that we have been evaluating for a long time. And uh, if you can see, if you can take in terms of time, uh, cost, and uh, get a ratio of phenotypic selection, genomic selection, it is one to four in terms of time reduction, and it is one to five in terms of cost reduction. I will show you another uh, uh, pilot, which is also uh, interesting. Uh, this was also in the sorghum crops. Uh, using satellite constellations to uh, predict yield within a season. And uh, as you know, currently uh, techniques that are used are a field survey or sensors or coarser spatial satellites uh, with uh, a very high cost and uh, undependable results. And uh, uh, what we get here is, this is for example, uh, when you don't use satellite data, here is when you use satellite data, you are able to get with high accuracy uh, how much we produce at the end of season. This is, for example, was a, a, a good pilot here, uh, nearly 40 or, or 50 uh, pilots here in Italy. Uh, you can see we were working on commercial farms where biomass was uh, harvested mechanically and brought to bioconverter where biogas is produced and combusted and poured into public grid. So this was at a commercial level and the results were very, very interesting. We were able, for example, to get an accuracy of 0.6%, I repeat, 0.6% of mean absolute percentage error. Just to get an idea of this is the Fisher type one error that is used in the experimental designs worldwide is 5%, but here we get 0.16%. This is really remarkable. And uh, we were also uh, able to move toward the fingerprinting uh, uh, possibility. You can see here, for example, this is the pattern of uh, dual purple sorghum and the biomass sorghum. This is the pattern of uh, sweet sorghum and the foreign sorghum and the perennial sorghum uh, from direct sowing. While this is a particular pattern for, uh, for perennial sorghum uh, deriving from regrowth, this was a repeat, a, a, a consistent pattern we've been observing in uh, sorghum populations and can be used as a fingerprinting for several purposes. Now let me talk very briefly about another pilot 
uh, of insurance here, where vegetation indices are being used and uh, model uh, crop models are being generated uh, to detect anomalies uh, that are useful for insurance purposes. Uh, this was being done in tomato, rice, and maize and cotton with interesting results. Uh, I, will I will terminate my presentation with uh, a, a correlated uh, pilot in ICAP support. Uh, this was uh, done in, in Romania. And uh, the most interesting part of this is the size of the pilot, because this one was uh, covering the entire Romania uh, with uh, nearly 90 million hectares in the experiment and uh, 60 million plots being monitored. And you can see the level of accuracy was really interesting, up to 99% even accuracy when the size of the plot is big. This achievement is also uh, uh, outstanding uh, and uh, merit really the presentation. Uh, so, uh, and this uh, uh, CAP pilot was also, uh, uh, it was possible to automate it. And uh, also harmonization was uh, being uh, uh, under, under, uh, underway. And uh, the final tuning also is under progress, but uh, uh, all in all, the accuracy obtained here was really outstanding. On this, I would really close with this um, slide because the potential was uh, in the first slide. What I want to say here is our technology implemented in the project data bio is borderless. It is without a border, for example, in the crop monitoring, if you have uh, general financial uh, plots or commercial fields, we have a historical and current data. We can develop crop disease models and we can uh, implement predictive, uh, descriptive and uh, several other analytics and uh, also allow end user to, to visualize our, our devices. Uh, and uh, are this service then, this service can be uh, uh, benefited uh, from anywhere in the world where these prerequisites are met. So what I think is uh, our technology is can be implemented here in Europe, but has also the potential to be implemented elsewhere in the world. On this, I'd love to thank you and uh, I will be uh, fielding your questions. Thank uh, you Thomas, very much. Can you please, can you take yes. back the screen? Thank you. Yeah, sure. Thank you very much uh, to all the three of you. It has been a very interesting uh, set of presentations. Uh, well, we are a bit uh, running out of time, but uh, I think I can not refrain myself to to, uh, to ask a couple of questions. Uh, so first of all, you you mentioned that uh, you have uh, different resources that can be reused by by different different stakeholders. So you mentioned, for instance, uh, yield models, uh, data sets uh, with level data, and also the, from the technical size, the data bio hub uh, with uh, pipelines. So my main question is uh, how external stakeholders could benefit from it, is, which is the process that you envisage for people that would like to, to, to make use of this uh, for their own purposes, how, how they should contact you or how to proceed? I think that the main thing is first to read how we use them, right, these technologies. And then, uh, Guy can say more about that, they can visit through the DataBio website or the DataBio hub in particular and find the technology that fits them. And uh, from there, they can find information to how to use them, how to contact the people who are responsible for them and all this and follow up from there. The DataBio website and the DataBio hub will live on or after the project ends, and there will be a reference for the next few years. Okay, thank you, Tonasis. Uh, well, and one question about the DataBio hub, uh, now that you mentioned it, uh, uh, you mentioned that it's more an, an environment rather than a platform, uh, but uh, if we, if some of the people would like to use um, this, uh, this framework, this environment, 
how is it uh, going to be possible? Is there any installation already in place that will live on after the end of the project? Is it possible to somehow deploy it in a different setting uh, and, and use it, uh, let's say, in a local basis? So how to, where do you envisage this? Yeah, yeah. If I so we have some, some, for example, in the in the fishery, so we have uh, have a data set that has been created in the, this project, and uh, and then uh, an anonymized data set. Or in fact, we have we have two of them. So one one is about uh, the, the fish catches. <coughs> From from Sintef in Norway, and then we have another one that is uh, relating to the to the predict maintenance of the engines on the on the fishing vessels, and and, uh, and we have also in, in that second case we have the data set from uh, the hundreds of parameters measured from the from the machines, and then we have uh, have the you know the event processing module from from IBM, and then we have the open VA from from VTT, a second co uh, module, and they are, are bundled, bundled into a into a Docker presentation, uh, Docker image. So in a way, you can't in that case really uh, run the run the what has been done in the in the pilot in that uh, fishery pilot. Uh, it, it's physically on the PSNC cloud in, in Poland, but of course you don't have to know that. So that is, uh, in a way, the most uh, advanced, or in a way where we have brought the integration uh, in the, the most most far. But but in another way, you can uh, then we have uh, uh, in a way more lo loosely connected modules. But you can, as, as Tanish said, from the you can go into the data bio hub and search for. Uh, for a, a certain, maybe for example, the, the neural networks that are are uh, that are categorizing the crop, and you can uh, see see the modules there. They are from several co providers here, CS, CSM and uh, and uh, there are signal so on. And then you can uh, go to them. Archimate in some cases also the Archimate models and dow download the models of the components of them that have been. Created, so you can really understand what what the neural network does. And, uh, but they are not may, may, they are not put to get bundled into a in, in that case into a into a Docker module. So they they are so they are the, the, on the whole scale <laughs> from from descriptions to 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 downloadable downloadable software components to the downloadable integrations of the software components as Docker images. Okay, and then also, uh, and also uh, to say that there are links from to the reports and to certain parts of the reports where the, where the components are described on the pipeline. So you go into the data bio hub, you click on the pipeline, and then you are taken to the to page 153 in one of the, of the deliverables because we are produced tens of deliverables, it's a bit difficult to navigate, but it's uh, through the data bio hub, you can find find it more more on the spot. Okay, thank you very much, Kai. Well, it's been a pleasure to have in, uh, the, the three of you here presenting the, the results of this uh, this project. I, I think you have a very impressive results and uh, very interesting for the audience. Uh, well, as you know, this uh, webinar will be will be posted in the, the BDBA page. Uh, you, you can see on the screen at the bottom. Also, you will receive uh, all the attendees and all the registered people will receive an email tomorrow at the, after 24 hours and an automatic email just saying that uh, uh, reminded you that the, 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 the slides will be ready and the recording as well. So you will you don't have to uh, to write it down right now the the, the URL but uh, you will receive this tomorrow. So thank you very much everybody for attending the webinar. Uh, and a happy Christmas to everybody because this is our last webinar for the year. We'll have more in the coming years as I mentioned at the beginning. So I hope I wish you a very happy new year as well. So thank you very much everybody and especially our speakers today. Thank you very much. Happy New Year too. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Nice. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.